Thanks to David Birch for becoming a member of our coaching team. Well, the January transfer window closes today and we're hoping to hold on to all of our key stars. There's been one backup player out the door and we're hoping we might be able to add one to the squad today. Can we do it? Let's go and find out. Yes, hello and welcome to part five of Building Brighton with me, Daniel. We are back today for deadline day in a January transfer window and due to a scheduling change very late on... It's AFC Wimbledon who will be facing in the FA Cup. A chance for us maybe to rotate a bit as things are looking alright. We're middle of the road. We've lost our way in that European chase, but we played the big teams and struggled. So if you're looking forward to seeing how we bounce back as we head towards the running of the season, then please do put a thumbs up on the video and subscribe for daily FM22 content. You can find all our other key playlists up in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel and the latest top three with more FM23 save ideas. And you can find all the links to other platforms and ways to support the channel down in the description below. But thank you very much for coming along as always, as we take part in Transfer Deadline Day. We've got 15 hours left, and it's the usual array of bizarre links and rumours coming from the media. So the first one is, we've talked about it a lot this FM, unrealistic loans that we're being linked with from players that would never be available for loan. Emil Smith-Rowe is the latest one here. He's a squad player at Arsenal. He started nearly all of their league games and he's not available for loan. But for some reason, he's popping up on that front. There's also a link with Tim Rernin, a goalkeeper we are trying to sign, and Augustin Martinez, who... I'm a little bit torn on, and again, we'll get to the reason for that in a moment. There's a couple of players potentially going out on loan, and Wolves are linked with about half of our squad. But so far, there's only been one big deal this January, and that is the out that we try to do in the summer. So if we go and have a look at the transfer history, and have a look at what's happened this month so far, you can see one youngster's gone out to Peterborough for 32000 and Neil Morpé has left the club. He's gone to Villarreal for £6 million. He wanted out. He was third choice. And although Welbeck's out of contract the end of this year, I feel like it was the right move for us. In terms of the transfer centre, there are a couple of players leaving on a free at the end of this year. Both of them out on loan at the moment. Ulrich Ayer and most namely Tudor Baluta. He has two-star ability, three-star potential. You'll probably remember him from the start of this save. He's on loan at West Brom. He's then going to go to Troy's, but he wasn't good enough for us. He didn't warrant a new deal, and he wanted a pay rise, which I wasn't willing to give him. One of our better youngsters, Andrew Moran, is now being linked with a loan out. But the big news of the day, aside from Alan Irving maybe coming in as a coach and the continued improvements off the pitch, is Tim Rernin, because he's a goalkeeper I quite like the look of. Now, I've told you I've never been really convinced by Robert Sanchez, and Jason Steele is probably one of the poorer backups in the Premier League in this game. But from Elfsborg, Tim Rernin looks a really good youngster. Now, it's not just a deliberate Scandinavian link because of our other save, but for 750 grand, rising to about 1.8 million, this deal looked all right to me. He's as good as Steele already. He's got much bigger potential, if we go and have a look at the reports, actually got the potential to be as good as Sanchez has. So I really like the look of that. For this price, it could be a great deal. He's got all the sort of positive personality traits you'd like. He can get a work permit, he's consistent, likes big matches, he's adaptable, he already speaks the language. And most importantly, if you didn't notice it before, model citizen. The benefits of having a model citizen in the club, not to mention a six foot seven goalkeeper. Oh, there's something about him that makes me think we could have a star on our hands. So we're going to try and sign him. We may have some problems with it though, because at the same time as our scout spotted him and we made our offer, so did a certain Manchester United. Both offers have been accepted, so it's not about the transfer fee. But if it comes down to straight shooter of being a backup at two clubs, I'm pretty sure he'll go to Manchester United and I'm pretty sure they'll offer him more money too. So we'll wait and see how that works out. If we go back to the inbox in terms of taking part in deadline day, the striker we were linked with, Augustin Martinez, I thought about it because he's only 20 years of age. He's got a cap for Uruguay and has scored. He's a good striker. He plays in the role that we like. I do have a worry though. He's not that much better than Evan Ferguson, our young wonder kid at the moment. And although his goal rate's great, his potential apparently isn't that good. Now, do I take the risk and hope that his potential is bigger than it's perhaps being let on by the scouts? 
Or do I wait for a bigger signing in the summer and just live with Welbeck and Evan Ferguson for now? Because I feel like, looking at Ferguson's potential, maybe I hold back his development if I don't get him involved instead. But being a couple of years further back, there's no doubt that Martinez is the better striker at the minute. So that's a little bit of a problem for us. Add to that that we can't really afford him and Rernin. So it comes down to what happens with that deal. If Rernin comes in, there will be no Martinez. And if he agrees another deal while we're waiting, we probably lose out on both. So we're going to take part in deadline day, see what the next 15 hours bring. There's a couple of backups I'd probably be willing to sell. But a lot of these boys who are being linked away. They ain't going anywhere. Alzate's one that's been trying to force his way out. Fredericks again. It is an area I've been looking right wing back. We've got Tarek Lamptey who isn't improving as much as I'd like. I'll be completely honest with you. He's not played that well either. Fredericks has been a little injury prone and is very much a backup at this level. So we did set our scouts to have a look for players. And there were two absolute gems that popped up last night. Let me get you to the inbox message. So Giel Rosas and Kelvin are two 20 and 21 year old right wing backs who have huge potential. Also interesting to note that Danny Carvajal popped up on that scout report. Not sure how because his wages are absolutely astronomical. But if I show you the two players in a bit more detail, both available maybe as summer targets for around 10 million quid. Giel Rosas is 21. He's brilliant defensively, not quite so good going forward, but a natural wing back works really hard and has a great engine too. In terms of the other fullback, Kelvin, much talked about in the real world at times. Official wonder kid, much more balanced attributes. While not a natural wing back by trade, he is accomplished there and his attributes probably suit it better. So he's the one ideally I'd like to sign. But when you look at some of the competition, Porto, Atletico Madrid, I think that might get a little bit tricky. So we'll see what deadline day brings, whether there's any surprise outs. And if so, it might open the door financially for a potential late in. But we're just waiting on the keeper at the moment. Well, maybe I'm starting to understand where these loan rumours have been coming from in all these saves. Because we have got some bizarre offers where top tier clubs are trying their arm. Well, it's not going to work with us. The squad registration stuff can wait. Because I want to see why Tottenham have tried to come in with a 40% wage offer for Solly March. It's insulting. So we're going to reject that. What a pathetic offer from Spurs. Armenia Bielfield come in for Alzate. They're offering no wages. It gets even worse. Tim Rernin is of course linked with us. We'll wait and see if he agrees. And we'll skip the staff meeting just this week. Because deadline day is more important. And the sad news we expected has happened. Tim Rernin... Why would you choose Manchester United over us, eh? In all seriousness, I think we know why. So he's not going to be joining us. That's a young goalkeeper loss. So Jason Steele, we will be stuck with him the rest of the year. Augustin Alvarez Martinez, our backup deadline day signing. He then goes at the same time. So we don't have enough time to negotiate with him. He's off to PSV. So he'll be getting European football anyway. And then the players we've been linked with are just out of range. Kevin and Barbu would be a brilliant right wing back. I'm a massive fan of his and he suits our tactic down to the ground. However, I can't afford 6.6 .6 million and I probably can't afford his wages. So we might see what we can do with it. But if we look at the transfer list, we're behind on our wages. The transfer budget isn't great. I mean, there's not many positive signs at the moment to suggest we can get that done. We have though got a player going out on loan, Andrew Moran going to Stevenage. 600 quid a week we made back there, not a huge amount. And Alan Irvin is looking at joining the coaching team. In an ideal world, I'd bring him in for Bruno, to be honest, because he's not a good coach. But what will happen if I get rid of a club legend and that personality? Well, be it, he's gone in real life, hasn't he? Let's have a look at some of the others that are about. Brian Kidd, Steve Bold, Ricky Sprazier, I bought all of them in. So the only option really beyond that is a fitness coach. And I don't really want to lose those two. So it might have to be Bruno. Let's see if we can add a coach. This behind the scenes stuff is important. Oh, they've let us have another one. Problem solved. Alan Irvin joins the club. Might be the only addition today. I'm going to try somehow to get Mbabu though. Well, 45 minutes of the window left. We've been trying to get people out. Alzate, one of them. And two or three others too. But he was the main one of value. Just couldn't get any offers. Solly March, we've got another pathetic loan off at right at the end from Newcastle. The money they've got and the money they've been spending, that's insulting. Because if we have a look at them this season, 
They have been spending bucket loads. Even this window, this deadline day, they spent 25 million. In the summer, they bought Renato Sanchez, Gabriel, the former Arsenal defender, and Diego Carlos. And they can't even afford to pay Solly March's wages. Yeah, right. Let's get through to the end of the day. It's been a really frustrating one. But hopefully, it won't affect our FA Cup performance and we can still have a decent finish to the year. And there we go. No transfers in during this window. We have had some real quality leave the club in Neil Moore pay, but he wasn't going to get in our team with Addy Amy's form. What we need to avoid now is an Addy Amy injury because we haven't got a lot behind him. Player wage expenditure shows probably how well we're doing at the moment. We're trying to be realistic on this front. Keep the cost down, even if it means spending on players like we have with Addy Amy. We want to make sure that the wage bill is low and when they get past that stage that they'll stay within our structure, then we'll move them on, just as Brighton do in real life. In terms of the transfer window as a whole though, Manchester City spend 77 million. They're bringing in Nacio, who we managed in the head coach this year, and Angel Correa from Atletico Madrid. And Burnley, bottom of the league, are trying to save themselves. They've bought in four players, including Andy Yeardham, Oli McBurney on loan, Andrei Yarmolenko and Malang Sar. But will it be enough? Because at the moment, they are marooned at 13 points from safety. And I'm hoping we might be able to nick Tarkovsky on a free this summer. Let's go and get through to the Wimbledon game though. See if we can win any FA Cup and see some slightly different players to normal too. Well, it's past deadline day, but not in France apparently. And it's very frustrating because if this offer had come in yesterday, we might have been able to arrange something with Kevin and Barbu. But as it is, we're going to have to reject this because we can't afford to trim the squad now. We can't replace them, so we have to stay at full strength. Fredericks, though, might be a candidate to go in the summer. He was always a stopgap signing. <laughs> Back for fitness test time ahead of the FA Cup third round. One of my favourite competitions, as regulars will know. AFC Wimbledon in the real world went out to non-league Boreham Woods. I was there, I saw it. Here, they've got Premier League opposition and will be the ones hoping to avoid an upset. So let's go get through and pick the team. We're going to rotate as much as possible. And hopefully, we'll have a similar outcome to Liverpool there, who majorly avoided a shock against Coventry. Okay, before I run through the headline team news, let me very quickly show you what's been happening on the pitch since the last episode to give you a bit of understanding as to how we've got here. Now, of course, first things first, this is the fourth round of the FA Cup, not the third, which is what I said earlier. But if we go and have a look at results since you were last with me, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. Let's get the month schedule up. There we go. So you were with me for what looked like really creditable draws against Spurs and United last time out. It was actually the start of a seven-game winless run where we started to concede goals galore. After those two games, we lost 2-1 at Chelsea and Adam Webster was the man getting a goal. It's always him or Adi Amy, isn't it? Then 1-0 defeats at Brentford, 3-0 defeat against Newcastle. A really poor way to finish a good calendar year. That dropped us down to mid-table, but a creditable tour draw against City helped us bounce back. Adi Amy and McAllister getting the goals there. A 2-2 draw at home to Preston. And look who saved us. We had to bring him off the bench at half-time. I've got him on the bench today just in case too. Karim Adeyemi in the 91st minute, earning us a replay away at Preston. A 3-2 win followed at home to West Ham in the league as we got our first win in seven in that competition. Adeyemi with two and Jacob Murder with a winner. A lovely shot from outside the box. The same scoreline got us the victory at Preston in the FA Cup replay. Joel Veltman in the 95th minute. After we'd thrown away two leads, including one in stoppage time again, McAllister and Murdoch got the other two for us. And in a good 2-1 win at Leicester in the league, Ricardo Pereira sent off just as they were getting back into the game. Adiemi and McAllister with first half goals for us. It does mean that Karim Adiemi, despite missing the first three games, is now Premier League top goal scorer. Yes, we've built our entire tactic around making it work for him and getting him as many chances as possible. But it is working out and it's something we're going to look at in a data hub at the end of this season because his shot conversion rate both to on target and goals is an outlier as the best I've ever had in this FM. So I'm really interested to know how that's worked because he's not got the best composure. He's not got any particular player traits. He just seems to be an absolute machine. He's performing like Erling Haaland but without the attributes for it. So Adi Amy, an absolute superstar. But let's go and show you the team we've picked today. It includes Jason Steele getting a rare outing in goal. A big surprise at centre-half. 
Jeremy Sami Ento back from loan is playing as the wide centre back. Partly because I don't have any other backups. It probably would have been Mwepu if he was fit. He can do it all right. But Sarmiento, albeit not convincingly, can officially play as a centre-half. So that's why he's there. He's alongside Mepham and Carboni. We've got March and Fredericks, the wing-backs. We'll keep an eye on March's fitness as we go along. Murder and Caicedo in the middle. Alzate and Gross, the number 10s. And then Danny Welbeck. Not started many games this year. Two starts. He's been injured so much of the time. But with Evan Ferguson not quite fully fit. He's going to have to start this one. We've got a bundle of game savers on the bench if we need them, as well as the youngster in the shape of Ferguson. So let's go and get into the FA Cup fourth round and see if we can avoid a giant killing against AFC Wimbledon. Well, three changes for AFC Wimbledon, a stark contrast to the 10 we've made. Only Murder keeps his place because Basuma had been away at AFCON. But if we get through the dressing room, we want to get the win here. There's a lot of complacent people in that defence, which I'm not happy about. So let's point the finger, get out there and make the difference. We've got most of them motivated instead. We're looking at potential stars of next season, the likes of Caicedo, Carboni. They are people who have got the potential to be part of the first team squad here. But they've got to start stepping up improving it. Because we've got great coaches in, we've got good facilities. And they're not improving as much as I'd like off the pitch. Despite getting football off the bench, there is some disappointment. As it's an early Wimbledon free kick, this would be a horror start. Nightingale heads just over. I'm pretty sure that we had him at Hemel at some point. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. As the ball comes into the box, Sarmiento with a header. It saved the first one and then Murder. It almost just came out and hit him too quickly. His rebound goes over the bar. Though we are starting to find some control with Sarmiento at the back. To Mepham and Murder. To Alzate. Up towards Welbeck. He's in one-on-one. -on -one. Been injured for so long. And he's rusty in front of goal. That is a shocking finish. I've got to be honest. Well, a hamstring problem for Steven Alzate. He might not last long now. We've also got to bear in mind that they've lost Jack Radoni, who's their star number 10. And we're starting to struggle from set pieces as Brentford Loney, Aaron Presley scores. Oh, that's a disaster. The man whose parent club will be facing in midweek as Arsenal have got Edison Cavani. There are some weird things going on here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put Sarmiento up in Alzate's role, mep him out there, and I'll bring on Lewis Dunk because I feel like we need a solid defensive base, deal with those set pieces and get the ball forward. With a minute to half time, it's nil one, and we are about to be on the end of an FA Cup shock. I think we're going to have to go all out and make changes now. I'm going to point the finger, I'm going to say I'm disappointed, and we're going to have to do what we did in the third round, bring on the game savers. Adi Amy will come on up front. Sarmiento will be replaced by Alexis McAllister. Fredericks has been shocking at right wing back. Lamptey will come on for him. And then in midfield, do I take off Murder or Caicedo? I'd like to keep Caicedo on, but we need to get strong players on this pitch. Basuma is the fifth man on, and then Murder will switch roles with him. That's what we're going for. All the big guns that we can get on are on. Let's see how we do in the second half. As five minutes gone in the second half, we've got a throw on the right with Tarek Lamptey. Plays a 1-2 and gets it up to Grass. Works his way into McAllister off the bench. And that's a really poor finish by his standards. You'd expect him to hit the target. As Lamptey's got another throw by the corner flag. We're immediately in the ascendancy. Back to Grass and Murder. Pascal Grass, good deflection to Adi Amy. Off the line by Presley. Hero at one end with the goal. And backs to the wall defending at the other end. The centre forward. All the way back on his goal line. And he somehow keeps it out as we're 25 to go. We're not really creating much. I'm going to demand more. I'm going to go attacking. But we're down at the other end with Wimbledon. This could be a real shock here. We clear it downfield but it's straight to Nightingale. And I'm starting to panic a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. Hennigan forced back to his keeper. We just need to give Adi Amy one one-on-one -on -one chance. And we know we'll equalise. But at the moment, Wimbledon looking the threat going forward. McCormick gets the ball into Chislet. Basuma wins the ball back in a tackle. It cuts away from him, but we're straight back as he's in possession. It works its way down the right to Adi Amy. Is he going to find someone in the box? Pascal Gross there. Across to Solly March. And the keeper can't keep it out. Plenty of power on the shot, albeit it was straight at him. But it's 1-1. We're back on terms. And the game is on its way to being saved. And we're back just a couple of minutes later. It looks like we're on a roll now. March and Carboni playing a 1-2 to Lewis Dunk. 
out to Mepham. I wonder if this will affect us on Wednesday night, having played the first teamers for a bit now. Addy Amy gets it from Lamptey. Two in the middle. McAllister's one. And the superstars combine. Lamptey to Addy Amy. Addy Amy to McAllister. 2 1 Brighton. Panic over. Back to positive, and we just keep the ball. And we're going straight from the kickoff. So maybe they're going to go forward now and be aggressive, or we're going to start to run riot. I hope it's the latter. Woodyard picks it up in the centre circle to Brown. Doesn't look good hit. No pressure on him. Lamptey forces it wide. Goes back to Woodyard and Lamptey nicks it. Brilliant stuff from him. Through ball towards Adi Amy. He's got tons of pace in behind. And it's game over. In the space of five minutes, Karim Adi Amy, Tarek Lamptey and Alexis McAllister combine. And their magic has shone through. I just saw that Cavani's got four now for Arsenal as Mepham nods in a Carboni header. That is a lovely set piece routine. It's one of my old favourites. You like the near post flick onto the far post or the far post one back across goal with Mepham to nod in at the near stick. VAR checks it. The goal is awarded. It's 4-1 and the young Italian got an assist there as Lamptey throws into Gross. Could we make this 5 or 6 really run the advantage home? McAllister must have been off there. He's put the ball in. He looked a country mile offside. But it's fair to say we're looking confident again now. Brown coming down the left for Wimbledon. They're still having a go. Fair play to them. They're forced backwards now though to Woodyard. And he holds the ball up. They've kept possession well. Brown released down the left. Lamptey chases him. And the ball back to the edge of the box finds Hennigan. He's now over on the right hand side. Got the chance to cross. There's three in the box including Presley. And I'm a little bit worried that between Duncan Carboni. No one got within five yards of him in a box. Can't afford to do that in the Premier League. Here, though, it shouldn't have too much of an effect. A consolation goal, though, for Wimbledon as McAllister finds Solly March. It's been a very entertaining second half, I think we'd say, as Lamptey beats the fullback from the long ball. Gets the chance to cross to the byline. Nightingale brings him down. I'm not sure that's a penalty. Looked very harsh on Nightingale, that. But we are going to get a chance to get five. And Addy Amy's going to get a chance for another, I think. Really, really poor decision. But VAR, no. It's happened outside the box. I thought the question was foul or no foul. But it's not in the area at all. Free kick given. Wimbledon probably deserved that stroke of luck. And as we get through stoppage time, the FA Cup run continues. It didn't look like it for an hour. But four goals in 13 minutes after bringing on all the superstars. And thankfully, with some good work done, we're in the hat for the fifth round. Back in a minute for the draw. And as we're in the hat for the last 16, a chance at a cup run. Let's have a look at who we could face. There are some big teams left, but there's Championship Peterborough. There's Championship Blackburn or bottom of the Premier League Burnley. There's Championship Barnsley. There's a few options of teams we could beat. There are still a lot of the big boys. Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester City, United Spurs. They're all in there bar Chelsea. However, there's only one way to find out who we're getting. Please give us a friendly tie. Although, based on our last two performances, maybe we need a step up to wake us up. So first team out the hat is Arsenal. They will be facing Norwich. Newcastle versus Leeds. Tottenham versus Wolves. We've avoided the two North London clubs. Don't be City away. That's Peterborough. There's one of the smaller clubs gone. No disrespect. Brighton at home. That's a big one for us. Now, if we avoid Liverpool or United, I'd call us favourites for any other tie. I love Barnsley at home. Let's see who it is. It is Barnsley of the Championship. I tell you what, maybe this is our year because we are getting some very fortunate draws at the moment. That is about the best we could have asked for in that competition. So we will play Barnsley in a few weeks' time. Let's have a look at the schedule for when we're next going to be back. Because straight after Barnsley are two very big league games. And a repeat as the months finally load up of the games that we played in the last episode. So if you're looking forward to staying up to date and finding out how far we go and where we end up finishing in the Premier League, then subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on for daily Football Manager content. There's links in the eye above to some of our FM23 save ideas and other playlists from this year's game too. And come and check us out on Twitch where we've got regular live streams. Links to everything else in the description below. But thank you again for watching as always. Above my head now are my relegation battle ideas for FM23. Please do give it a try if you haven't already. I'll see you back here again next time.